Good evening and welcome to another episode of Free Media, Free Minds, the show that looks at the state of the free flow of information in South Africa today. This evening we're going to be tackling a, tackling a very interesting topic, the question of media diversity. When we go into the shops, they're full of magazines and newspapers. There are f at least four free-to-air TV channels. In some cities like Cape Town 5, DSTV, you name it, South Africa has a lot of media. But do we have a diverse range of voices or are all the media telling us give or take the same thing? In the studio with me this evening to discuss this topic, I have Eric Kulwane, the chairperson of the Parliamentary Portfolio Committee on Communications. Welcome, Eric. Uh, Jane Duncan from the Right to Know campaign. Hi, Jane. Mm -hmm. And uh, Nazmi Jamuddin, who's a publisher of People's Voice, a small commercial newspaper in Cape Town. Thank Welcome. You for me on. <coughs> we wanted to have with us tonight the Print Media Association of South Africa, who are the owners of the big newspaper houses in South Africa. And unfortunately, they declined our invitation. But I think our guests here will give us a, a very thorough understanding of the topic. Before we get into the discussion, though, we're going to have a look at a quick insert that's been prepared on, on the issue. Media ownership in South Africa is definitely extremely unfair. It is highly monopolized. Um, in the print media sector, you've got four companies that dominate, four big companies. That includes Avosa, Caxton, uh, Media 24, and also Times Media Limited, or the independent, the independent group. Um, they dominate print media. So the chances of a community group producing a publication uh, like a community newspaper is extremely limited and I would suggest it's extremely rare in South Africa unless they have some sort of commercial sponsorship or some support from government. So if a newspaper becomes reliant on advertising there is no way uh, you know when it's established that it would report negatively about uh, you know one of the advertisers. Recently uh, there was a threat by the government spokesperson, Jimmy Mani, for example, and sort of veiled threat, but nevertheless a threat, that um, government will have to consider its ad spend, particularly in relation to those newspapers that were not necessarily, as he put it, publishing you know, the truth about government or m more positive reports about government. So in South Africa, I think we have a serious problem in the print media sector, it's probably the worst situation at the moment, uh, where there's hardly any space for alternative uh, media groups or communities to realistically publish and have a good audience that might even be prepared to pay. I think the monopolization of print media especially needs serious attention. Um, so there needs to be some regulations which curbs monopolization. The second thing that could be done by government is to allocate resources. Uh, and it doesn't have to be money going directly into uh, groups who want to produce uh, publications, but they can provide uh, centralized facilities like cheap printing, for example. The other sectors of media, of course, is broadcasting. Um, radio and television. Now there we also have extreme monopolization. Um, on the one hand you have the SABC which dominates both radio and television. Um, now the problem there is not so much that it's the SABC. The SABC is meant to be a public broadcaster. In other words its productions and its broadcast are in the interest of the public and to some extent it has to be also by the public. Now it's that by the public and in the interest of the public that over the last decade has become highly questionable in South Africa. And you will see that on all our television channels, um, in my view, the kinds of programs that uh, the South African public is, is fed, many of it is absolute rubbish and really in, an insult to the intelligence and cultural values of our people. A lot of it is American, um, 
you know, sometimes uh, very light-hearted, meaningless stuff that has no bearing on, on the lives of our people. I can give you concrete examples. If you take um, the two main adversaries in our society, labor versus uh, business or capital, you will find that in all newspapers and on public broadcast and in commercial radio, business has so much space um, we don't even go to commercial broadcasters because they're not even interested to have labor shows which are more representative of the views of uh, ordinary people, working class people, and to give them a voice as well. Hardly ever um, catered for in our mainstream media. The voice of the poor, the voice of the marginalized is not given a platform and therefore politically and ideologically their views and perspectives do not dominate society. And if they have no influence over what happens in society, then society doesn't develop in their interest. So it does have a bearing on it. And we really need to do something to get organized and to change the media dispensation in South Africa. So there you have it. Eric, from Parliament's perspective, what is media diversity and why is it important to democracy? Uh, from, from our perspective, uh, it is important because uh, the cornerstone of our democracy uh, depends on the inform, informed society. So we need our people to be informed. But as the insight was indicating that uh, we are in an unfortunate situation where the big four were dominating in particular in the print media. They go to the extent even of, uh, you know, when we had the discussion in Parliament between the advertising industry and also the print media, mm -hmm. we have discovered that uh, they are not even respecting what is defined by the Act as a community media. Uh, they create their own community newspapers. These big four create their own community newspapers to compete with the actual community uh, media or print media newspapers and so on. And that has also caused that to uh, go to the situation where they find themselves being muscled out of the market. Because you must remember, if uh, the big folk create their own community newspapers, they can sustain the losses because they've got the deep pocket. Mm -hmm. uh, but those who are just establishing their newspapers uh, at that particular level, they don't have a, big, a deep uh, pocket to sustain any loss which they can incur. And as a result, they find themselves out mm -hmm. of the market. But that diversity will mean, uh, because in the context of today, if you look print media, uh, we are consuming the, the views of the big four. Mm -hmm. uh, so diversity will mean that uh, we should be able to have different views in, yeah. the, in, the, in, in, the, in the broader society, sure. not just to have one view throughout the country. So, so when we talk about the big four, we're talking about four big companies. And in fact, Media24, the old NASPERS, being by far the biggest. Jane, is it, is it fair to say, though, that just because a few companies are controlling so much of our print media, that that is limiting the perspectives that are available in society, the views? Are there things that they are censoring? It certainly does limit um, the range of views um, in society. Um, and just to break down the problem even further, one can say that we have um, one large group um, that is dominating, which is Media24 NASPERS. NASPERS owns Media24 um, and three smaller groups. Now, if we look at what's happening in NASPERS Media24, we will see, for instance, that its um, news products are packaged across a range of different platforms. Um, so we will see, for instance, um, um, News24 um, being made available through MWeb, for instance, on, on the internet. So there's internet content. We see um, News24 also being made available through um, the DSTV um, platform as well. So what it means is um, news is being made available within the group um, across a range of different platforms, um, which obviously limits the diversity of perspectives that are available in that particular group. So notwithstanding the fact that it's big, um, it still has limited diversity of perspectives. But also, because these large groups tend to be funded um, uh, primarily from the same source, which is advertising, what one tends to have 
is um, competition for the same source of funding, which tends to bring in a sameness in terms of how things are represented and also who gets to speak um, in the media as well, because they're, they're effectively competing um, for the same source of advertising, so therefore they have to offer um, a similar product. And what that tends to do is it tends to drive um, um, reporting towards um, upper income brackets, um, towards those sectors of society that have the, um, the money to be able to attract advertising. And those tend to be LSM 5 and above. So LSM 1 to 4 um, um, are not really the kinds of audiences that, 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 that will be addressed um, by these media groups. So in fact, that's the majority of South Africans, poor people. Yes, it is. It is. And one can say that um, in the same way that we have a 50% society where we have 50% um, of South Africans um, participating in the economic mainstream, we also have a large group of people who are not in the economic mainstream and eff effectively have been crowded out, have fallen out of the economic mainstream. And we see those very social yeah. divisions also reproducing yeah. themselves in the media as well. Yeah. So. Uh, Nazmi, you, you're really at the cold face on the street day in and day out trying to make a small independent newspaper work. What are the, some, some of the challenges that you're encountering when you see these big corporations that you're competing against? Yeah, no, of course, there's, uh, there's uh, a lot of uh, you know, challenge, the challenges you, 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 you face. I mean, uh, of course, with, uh, with the printing times and things, you have to wait until the, the, the mainstream media has been printed, until uh, they fit in a slot for you. Mm. And uh, the other challenges is, um, you know, advertisers. It can be difficult, you know, to, to, to find a few, you know, to find advertisers because um, the, the, the main papers already have, you know, the, the, the bulk of the advertisers. Mm. Right. So competing for advertisers, but they also own the printing presses and in some cases the distribution networks as well. And they use those to make the lives of, of, comp of small newspapers very difficult. Yes. E Eric, I mean, your committee has started some hearings and in Daba on media transformation. What, what outcome do you hope for? And what would satisfy you as a diverse media in South Africa? Um, in fact, part, part of what, what uh, also have impact on what comes out as a product is also the issue of ownership and control mm. uh, of these uh, uh, companies and so on. Uh, because during the Indaba, uh, it came out that they are saying on average, uh, black ownership is still at 14 percent. And uh, when you look into women, it's at 4.4 mm. percent and really. For 17 years, if we are still on those percentages and so on, that to a certain extent uh, make us to understand why you have uh, the, the 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 type of. Uh, so, so, would you be satisfied with a BE type of code that saw the same corporations, the same size, with the same market share, but with majority black, majority woman ownership? No, it, it won't. It won't solve the problem of diversity because diversity is, to, is about uh, uh, various views. Uh, so even if, the, I always argue to say, even if you change the ownership, as long as it's the, therefore is dominant in terms of uh, producing the views, uh, feed our nation in terms of uh, this news and so on, uh, it will continue because for me it's not about the color. Even if you change, we will put blacks and so on, but if they are still dominant and continue to conduct themselves the way they are doing now, uh, there will be little going to change, except that uh, indeed in terms of percentage and the color, maybe that will change. But the issue which is clearly coming out is that uh, uh, it will seem that uh, it, they, they are moving in a, in a slow pace uh, in terms of uh, making sure that they transform themselves and also because when you go back 1996, you have your Comtask report. And in that report, 1996, it, it clearly states that uh, part of the issues which need to be looked at is the issue of printing and distribution. Because part of the monopoly, that's where it's been monopolized. Mm -hmm. uh, I was saying always when I talk about this matter to say, this big four even determine the business case for the smaller one. Because if they don't want to print for you, they will tell you you can print only once a month, even if your business case, you wanted to have a weekly newspaper. Mm -hmm. But you can't because you are limited in terms of printing. Yeah. 
I mean, Jane, you've suggested that, in fact, it's the commercialized advertising model that also limits the number of views. Even non-commercial media like community media, the SABC as a public broadcaster, they have to make their income from advertising. And as long as they're dependent on advertising, they'll have to speak mostly to rich people's concerns. What, what, are, there, what are the alternatives to that and what do you think uh, Parliament, what laws need to be passed really, if laws need to be passed? Well, I think 17 years into democracy, it's untenable that we have a media system that relies overwhelmingly on advertising as its funding base. Because what it does is it drives um, media focus towards upper income brackets. What it also does as well is it sucks um, um, political opinions that one hears within the media towards the political center because that is where the money is in society, it's in the political center. Um, and the range of um, uh, views either to the left or to the right um, tend to get marginalized, um, um, understood as being beyond the bounds of acceptable discourse. We certainly need a strongly publicly funded um, public broadcaster and that's going to become even more important in the digital multimedia environment. Um, we need far greater public funding, um, as far as I'm concerned, um, through a legislated mechanism yeah. for community media. Um, so that's certainly one legislative challenge um, that we face. And we also need legislation to limit um, media concentration. Mm. Um, We're going to get into that when we come back from a short break, but it's very encouraging, I'm sure, for the public to know that after 16 years, Parliament is taking up this thorny issue of the domination of big corporations in our media. And we're going to learn more about what some of the alternatives are, their pros and cons, when we come back uh, after this short break. Welcome back to Free Media, Free Minds. This evening we're looking at the question of media diversity, mm -hmm. media, media concentration and monopolies. The big corporations that are controlling most of the media, especially the print media in South Africa, and the very negative effects that is having on our democracy. Before the break we were talking about possibilities, roles that, that the government could play to either limit the monopolies or to support the small independent community, non-commercial media, including the SABC. From Parliament's perspective, what are some of the options you see before you and what would you consider doing? Uh, w one of the options is that, uh, <coughs> which uh, fortunately I was presenting today in Parliament when we're dealing with our annual uh, budget report, was that we have presented the view that uh, firstly we need to review the mandate for the Media Diversity and Development Agency. So that is reviewed in such a way that is, is they are able to fight because currently they are more of a advocacy sort of, uh, but they don't have that much uh, a, a, a mandate to be able to to crack down uh, this this, this uh, issue of uh, uh, concentration of, of the meat. So, in on that part, I think that uh, hopefully around next year or so, we will be starting to see some uh, suggestion in terms of policy change and legislation coming before Parliament. But on the broadcasting side, indeed, uh, we are battling with the issue of what type of a public broadcaster must we have as a country. Can we continue with a public broadcaster which is funded almost 80% through commercial adverts? and government only 3% and then the license is around 15% or so. Is that a public broadcaster or is just one of the commercial uh, 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 TV mm -hmm. and so on? Because in my view, if you watch uh, SAPC and ETV, to make just for argument's sake, if you remove the E and the SAPC and watch those channels, uh, no one can tell that one is a public broadcaster, the other one is free to air and so on. They look the same. So, so, so indeed, so. we have to deal with the issue of the mandate so that SAPC mm -hmm. deal with the public mandate and not the commercial interest. Yeah, but, but I mean, as Jane has been saying, a lot of it boils down to resources. Do you agree with, with Jane's proposal that there should be increased public funding uh, uh, for, for non-commercial media? 
Uh, of course, that, that's the international trend. You go to UK, you go to Australia, their public broadcasts are funded by government, and they are not even allowed to advertise to a certain extent mm -hmm. and leave those issues of adverts uh, to, to the commercial uh, media and so on. Pro public broadcasts are focused in terms of their mandate and so on. Mm -hmm. Because as long as they are going to be subjected to commercial uh, adverts, uh, there is no way. Uh, they will be able to stick to their mandate because by the way i think also there's a weakness on the current system as you know that sapc was supposed to be public you also have the commercial and what is happening now you'll find that the commercial wing is not performing the public is performing now the commercial now is a drainage to the public one yeah. and so on so it does not seem to work to a certain extent we need to review it jane we were hearing eric talking about the government giving one of its agencies power to crack down on the media in terms of diversity. Does that sound like a threat to media freedom? What is appropriate for a government to do to regulate the media in a democracy? Well, I think it's entirely appropriate for legislators to intervene on two levels. Firstly, um, in relation to ownership. I think it's a democratic imperative um, for any uh, legislature um, to legislate um, a, a, a size beyond which media organisations should not be allowed to grow because otherwise they threaten the diversity of opinion in society. That's the one level, ownership. Um, the second level is um, on the level of funding and um, a number of other countries have subsidy systems that they've set up in order to uh, cross-subsidise um, non-commercial media. It's not permissible. Um, for legislature to attempt to control content. And this is one of the difficulties that um, you know, we as the Right to Know campaign have with the Polokwane resolutions that were taken around the establishment of the Media Appeals Tribunal. Um, the feasibility of establishing this tribunal obviously still has to be investigated, but um, um, for us, um, it signals that the ANC may be attempting to intervene in areas of media that it shouldn't be intervening in, in other words, content, but it's not intervening in areas of media that it should be intervening in, which is ownership. Right. And we'd certainly like to see a change on that level. Ownership really does need to be legislated for to prevent concentration. Uh, Nazmi, on the ground, what kind of support do you think a democratic government should be giving to see small papers like yourselves sustaining and, and in fact thriving? Look, I think the state need to, um, uh, they, they play an important role. I think they need to uh, start, uh, you know, funding these papers um, for them to sus sustain, uh, you know, community uh, papers. Yeah. So actually giving some kind of seed or core some, funding yeah, to sustain. Funding. Yeah. And then as, as uh, Martin was saying in the insert, looking at funding printing presses and funding distribution to level the playing fields. Yes, no, of course. Mm. What do you do, Eric, in a situation like South Africa where we already have media that is too big? Do we cut them down to size? Uh, you, 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 you see that um, <clears throat> as much as uh, we might not want to do that, but uh, we need to deal with the matter of diversity. Because if, if, if there is no limit, uh, what will ultimately happen is that we are going to not be able to deal with the issue of diversity. Mm -hmm. um, uh, as uh, um, uh, 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 my colleagues uh, uh, has already alluded in, to, in terms of that particular matter. But I think uh, one thing which we are not trying to do now is the issue which uh, she has raised, the issue of content. We want to focus on the issue of ownership, as a, a control and ownership, as I've indicated. And moreover, uh, we are also engaging MDDA to look at the possibilities of creating sort of a printing. Uh, whether a printing corps or government intervene in terms of making sure that this uh, community media they are assisted in terms of printing. So those are the issues which we are busy engaging uh, MDDA around those, uh, those particular issues so that uh, we are able to deal uh, with this matter of uh, the monopoly, in particular on the printing side and the distribution and so on. So those are the things which we are trying to do. But indeed, if it comes to push, we have to limit uh, them because uh, I think it's also the right of each and every citizen of this country to have a diversity in terms of views, not to be fed with one views yeah. who are dominant. 
Jane, South Africa has a competitions commission which is set up to make sure that no one player gets so big that they can abuse a market. Why isn't the competitions commission adequate to limit these media monopolies? Why do we need to make new laws? I think it's very well recognized internationally that um, competition law is a blunt instrument when it comes to realizing media diversity because it measures different things um, to, 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 to diversity and what one needs to do in order to achieve diversity. So for instance, if one takes the, the South African Competition Act, um, it measures, um, it considers a firm to be dominant if it holds between 25 and 45 percent of the market. Um, if it's closer to 25%, it needs to prove that it exercises market power. Mm. Now, um, if one's concerned about newspaper diversity, for instance, um, you should start to push alarm bells around concentration if a newspaper group grows larger than 20%. Mm. So again, um, there's a problem there. Also, competition authorities only tend to intervene when there's abuse of dominance, whereas I think we would consider dominance per se to be socially detrimental. So what that means is that if one takes a group like Media24, which is already at something like 39% um, of total newspaper circulation, the competition authorities is not going to intervene in relation to that particular case because they're already dominant. They're not going to intervene to break up that dominance. And those are some of the reasons why I think it's inappropriate to leave this matter to competition authorities. So in fact, we need new laws if we're going to break up the monopolies. And we need extensive public funding if we're going to see small newspapers, community television stations, and the SABC playing their, their role. Where is all that money going to come from, given that the ANC has historically been very uh, unwilling, I would say, to, to fund community media? Uh, I would say uh, it's the opposite, uh, because if you read the ANC resolution, uh, they've been saying by now we should be funding SAPC 60% from the public purse mm -hmm. in terms of the ANC resolution. But I would say government has been responding very slowly uh, to make sure that those things they do happen. Yeah. When it comes to the sustainability of the community media, as a committee during the hearings, because we also brought GCIS, the Government Communication Information System, uh, we are pushing them that government must commit a certain quota to fund for, for their advert ad spend to the community media because indeed they also need government injection. We cannot rely that the other people are going to use them, but government can't. Jane, if, if print media South Africa were here, I'm sure they would say that, you know, we're in a dying industry. Every year we make less and less money. We can't possibly pay for diversity. Where do you see the money coming from, especially if you look at examples around the world where countries have passed laws to promote diversity? Where does the money come from? Well, I see the money coming from um, uh, groups that are converging, that are taking advantage of, of the opportunities, the commercial opportunities offered by convergence, and NASPES is a case in point of that. Um, the overwhelming uh, bulk of its, um, of its profits actually come from a, an instant messaging service based in China called Tencent. Um, it's not really coming from its newspapers. Mm -hmm. And the other groups that tend to derive most of their income from newspapers are, are, are suffering and they're probably going to wither away in time. Um, now, given the, the, the huge dominance of Munaspers, I think it's a group like that that could contribute tremendously um, yeah. towards, towards uh, yeah. funding diversity in the future. And there are other places as well. There are countries in the world that have a tax specifically on cigarettes and alcohol that gets ring-fenced to fund media because information, as Eric said, is critical to democracy. It's critical to South Africans making this democracy work to have access to a wide range of views. We've come to the end of the show. I, I want to thank the guests uh, for, for the interesting discussion. It's crazy that we live in a city that can support two daily newspapers and both of those newspapers are owned by the same company. And that company, in fact, is owned by a foreigner who doesn't even live in South Africa. It's very encouraging to hear that Parliament sounds like they're developing the courage to take on the monopolies, break them up so that small newspapers can thrive and flourish, community TV stations like the one you're watching can flourish, 
and we can have a wide range of views so that we can make up our own minds about what's going on in society. I want to thank you for watching uh, Free Media, Free Minds this evening. The show was brought to you by the Friedrich Ibbit Stichting, Cape Town TV and the Alternative Information Development Center. Tune in next week for another episode of Free Media, Free Minds. Thank you and take care. I have studied the idea of a democratic and free society. It may be, it may be.